Good morning and welcome to Carvely St Wilfred's morning prayers on this Wednesday the 7th of June and I'm actually bringing you this message from Morocco. We're on holiday here in a place called Essaouira which is a, a city surrounded by walls in a, and the centre of it is called the Medina and Every five times a day, there is a call for prayer across the city, which travels across um, the buildings, which are fairly low in compared to London or the tall towers. And the sound just travels across. And there's this real sense that the people are seeking peace and seeking God and seeking his heart. And as we know, and it's really appropriate given our reading today, which is Romans 5, which says through Christ we can have that peace. And that's what we're going to focus on today, uh, going through Christ and receiving that peace for ourselves. Oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth to proclaim your praise. Let us say together a prayer of thanksgiving. So good to give give thanks to God. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hand. In the fullness of time you made us your, in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we receive, rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so that may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And let us turn to the word of God. And our psalm reading is taken from Psalm 119. And we're starting at verses 9 to 16 and then verses 25 to 32. How can a young man keep his way pure by living according to your word? I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might sin, not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in, the following, in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. I am laid low in the dust. Preserve my life according to your word. I recounted my ways and you answered me. Teach me your decrees. Let me understand the teaching of your precepts. Then I will meditate on your wonders. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Keep me from deceitful ways. Be gracious to me through your law. I've chosen the way of truth. I've set my heart on your laws. I hold steadfast your statutes. O oh Lord, do not let me be put to shame. I run in the path of your commands, for you have set my heart free. Teach me, O oh Lord, the way of your statutes, faithful God. Let your word be the treasure in our hearts that we may delight in your truth and walk in the glorious liberty of you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forevermore. And let's turn to our New Testament reading, Romans 5, verses 1 to 11. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings 
because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, and hope does not because God and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, some may possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, when we were still God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received, now received reconciliation. And in some ways, I'm not going to go through the whole passage and, and explain it all. There's a lot in there. Um, but I was looking at something that said, what's the interpretation of this for children? What are the lessons that we can teach? And, and the simple message is, Christ is the one that we can look to for hope and life. And even though we do not deserve it, God has given, God has given us his love and salvation. That means we can receive his grace and have hope in Christ. We are, the message clearly in the first verse, we are right with God. We are at peace with God from now and through all eternity. And this is possible only through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ, we can have that permanent peace. And since he is the one that made, made it so, it is the peace that can never be lost. He makes those promises to us and that can't be taken away. And when I'm reflecting on the Muslim religion, and I'm not a scholar in all these things, but I can really see the people, as I said, searching for God and looking for that inner peace. And there is a sense of, of, of peace when they call the prayer, they're searching. And we have this gift, we have it to us, we can have that, we have access to it through Jesus Christ. Let us come into prayer. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with God, God, glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you, you hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And let us come to a time of redemption, reading from Colossians 1, verses 13. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves in whom we have redemption for the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all the, his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forevermore. Amen. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And let us come together in prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in the union with Christ, 
Let us pray to the Father. That this day may be holy, good and joyful. We pray to you, O Lord. That we may offer to you our worship and our work. We pray to you, O Lord. That we may strive for the well-being of all creation. We pray to you, O Lord. That in the pleasures and pain of life, we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. We pray to you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit and communion with all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray to you, O Lord. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. And let us say the collect of today. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant grace by the confession of true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let's come and say the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.